Hey everybody. So we're winding down in our fourth course here. We're gonna, um, today we're gonna look at the Hey everybody. So we're winding down in our fourth course here. Uh, in this lesson we're gonna look at detecting user input, so it's gonna be a quick lesson. And before we get into that, this is a phenomenal read about fourth. This was written in, I think it was 1988, if we go to the very bottom. Yeah, it was originally published in 1988. So it's an old article, but it covers all kinds of stuff about Forth. It talks about how people, some people either, people either basically love or hate Forth. Uh, it gives a history on Forth. Uh, we can go through the headings here. Um, terminology, it talks about the Forth language itself. But then it goes into the fourth environment, the fourth operating system, um, which which fourth is basically uh, an operating system as well. Um, the fourth philosophy, which I find very interesting, uh, and then it looks at fourth's place in the universe, kind of where it, it thinks fourth is going, and it's it's just really interesting to see um, and to read. Uh, it's a good one to stick in like Pocket if you have if you use Pocket or you know whatever reader. It's just a nice, t basically you could just copy this into a txt file and read it from wherever, you know, just save it offline and just when you get a spare moment, pick it up and read a little bit. But it's just really a great read. Um, a Fourth Apologia by Ray Duncan. Um, and this website's kind of cool. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Holland Fourth? Um, I think it's, it's uh, not exactly sure what it is, 100%. But if you go to this, there's you can see, um, let's see, consulting, maybe it's like a fourth programming consultant or something. Um, fourth was a revelation. Fourth meant freedom, independence, power, complete control of the hardware, simple solutions, yada, yada, yada. The ideal tool for a one-man shop. So it's, it's pretty cool, I think. I don't know, it's a cool website and just a great article. So um, that was, uh, let me give you the link to that again. So if you just go to, hallonforth.com slash duncan.html and that's where that article is at. So get out of that and let's um, let's uh, look at so there's a word built into fourth uh, most fourth implementations for and built into G fourth for getting user input it's just the word key that I was having trouble with before um, you hit enter, you put in key, and then it should. Basically, right now it's listening for my input, and then I put something in. There we go. So see, I don't know if you. It was. I don't know if it was in a video that I recorded or one that I tossed out, but uh, it was not picking up my first keystroke for some reason. So, but anyway, if we look at the stack, there's the ASCII value of the key I pressed, which I think it was J or something. I might have. I, yeah, I can't remember what key I just pressed, but I think it was J. Uh, and we can just do emit. Uh, oh, it was K. Okay, there we go. So, um, so that's a, you can use that in something like this. And this is why, why I really want to share this with you because I like sharing stuff about languages that's, that, that are useful, right? Things that are useful. Um, and things I like doing a lot of times are interacting with a user in a terminal session, right? So, um, I don't know, a lot of the programs I make, I, I do that just because it's just fun for me. I, I like that, the idea of, of interacting with a user, so, um, through the computer. So, here we have a word that we created, print key code, and, uh, and then there's a loop here, right? A while loop, begin until, and, uh, and we have key, so that's going to happen. And uh, basically, then the compiler is going to listen, and it's going to whatever key is pressed, it's going to put it on the stack. And then it's going to duplicate whatever is on the stack, whatever number, and then it's going to uh, pop out whatever number is on the stack. And then if it equals 32, uh, it's going to stop looping. So it's going to keep looping until it gets whatever ASCII value is 32, which not sure. I didn't note that down. I think it's, I want to say it's A. T code. So, 
If we do this, so A is 97, geez, what's 32? Let's keep, just keep going. 49 is one, 50 is two. <laughs> geez, what, oh, I know it's like space bar or something. There we go, space bar. So basically what print key code does is just listens until it hears space bar. So that's a great way to, you know, make like a menu or something like, uh, Press A for, um, you know, press A to go to this menu or B to go to this menu option or whatever. Um, so anyway, that's how you, it's a good way to get user input, just a cool little trick I wanted to show you guys. And uh, in the next video, uh, we're just, it's one more thing I wanted to share with you guys that's pretty cool. Um, I set up a starter project for a game coded using GeForce, so, uh, and SDL2, um, which is a, a graphics library written in C, but we can use it in fourth. Um, we're not going to do a full game because that would just like quadruple the length of this course, if not make it even longer than that. So, uh, but I'm just going to give you that starter project just so you can, you know, if you feel like tinkering with it, you can, and if not at this point, you know, you, I think, you know, a good amount about fourth then you can, you can, uh, at least get started doing whatever you want to do in it. If you want to do anything in it, or just maybe it just helped you uh, understand programming concepts, you know, like the stack in a different, in a, in a better, deeper way or something. So anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Stick around for the next one. Thanks for watching.